Well, hey everybody and welcome to Central at Home. So glad you could join us today. How are you watching this or wherever you're watching this, it's our honor that you decided to spend the next 45 minutes or so with us today. And you picked a great day to be with us. Pastor John Paul is with us today and uh, excited to hear a great word from him today. Now, if you're being impacted by these experiences, why don't you take a moment right now and share this? It's an easy thing to do. It goes a long ways in making sure that so many people get to hear this amazing message of hope uh, that we're gonna hear today. And so why don't you take a moment right now and share this on whatever platform you're on, whether it's Church Online, YouTube, or Facebook. Also, if you'd like to partner with us in making sure that nobody misses out on this amazing community of faith, the easiest way to do that is by heading over to centralcc.ca slash give, and you can set up a one-time gift or regular ongoing giving. Either way, everything that we do happens because of your generosity, and we wanna thank you in advance for being the amazing, generous church that you are. Now today I wanna to encourage you with what I believe is vital to our faith, and that is connecting with God. I wanna encourage you today with the truth that I believe God wants to speak to your heart, He wants to encourage you, He wants to heal you, and most importantly, He wants to be a part of your life. And so why don't you take a moment right now and just allow your mindset to focus in on connecting with God. Also, we wanna encourage you through this fall to make sure that you're connecting with others. This is so important for us as well. This is what it means to be part of the church. There's lots of ways you can do that this fall. The first one is by engaging with this online experience. We wanna encourage you to let us know where you're watching from, how you're doing. We'd love to pray for you in the chat window as well. Uh, you can also join or host a watch party. Those are happening all across our region and you could join a group as well. Those are for all types of interest, demographic, and by region. You can get connected to a group, or you can join us live on Sundays at 9, 10, 30, and 12 at our 240 Scott Street location. Easiest way to take your next step is by heading over to centralcc.ca slash connect, or you can text the word central to 905-937-5610. Our heartbeat is that you would get connected this fall to God and each other. So with all that being said, the moment you're waiting for is finally here. Our experience is about to begin and it all starts right now. Darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to a hope beyond. All creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God. We will not be moved when the earth gives way. The silence breaks in the name of Jesus as the heavens cry that the earth respond. All creation shouts with the voice of triumph to declare the reign of the Lord our God. We will not be moved when the earth gives way. Everything is 
His way. For the risen one is overcome. And for every fear, there's an empty grave.
stop working Even when, when I, I don't, don't see it, you're working Even, Even when, when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I don't feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. You know, today I wanna to invite you to take a moment just to think about the scripture that we just read. And as you do, I want you to consider your perspective on the future. You know, right now in our culture, there's all kinds of buzzwords when it comes to the future. Things like unprecedented times, uncertain times. I could probably go without ever hearing that word unprecedented again, and I would be just great. Uh, but I love this passage out of Isaiah 54, and I like how the King James puts it. It says this, it says, "'No weapon forged against you shall prosper.'" And that phrase shall prosper, it means it doesn't get the final word. Doesn't get the final word. And I like how this passage ends. It's significant because it says that I, the Lord, have spoken. And I know for us right now in our culture, it's so easy to look towards the future. And in the natural, it doesn't look very good. It looks pretty grim. And maybe you can attest to that. You have a dream that seems like that dream is fading really fast. It seems like that dream has died. 
Maybe if you were to talk to your accountant, they would say your business, it does not look good for you. Maybe you have hopes and dreams that seem like they're going away faster than you can imagine. And it's easy for us in the natural to choose that perspective that the future doesn't look that great. And yet I'm reminded today in this passage, it says that when you come towards God, when you follow Him, that blessing follows those that follow God. Did you know this? That God actually cares more about your future than you do? That He has plans not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future? And yeah, you might be going through a season right now that God's allowing you to go through. And maybe it is hard and maybe you don't understand all of it. But can I tell you that when we choose to have a perspective that's kingdom, when we have a choose, that, uh, choose to have a perspective that's focused on what God says, that He gets the final word. Our culture doesn't, our society doesn't, the media doesn't. Nobody gets the final word except God. And you know what? This God, He's a way maker. He makes a way when there seems to be no way. That's His truth. That's His promise for you today. And so can I ask you this, is what's your perspective? When you look to the future, what are you choosing to see? Are you choosing to see everything negative and everything dark? Or are you choosing to see a God who makes a way? May you choose to see that today. May you choose to align your life around a God who makes a way when there seems to be no way. And may you experience His hope and His life and His light. That is at the end of the tunnel. We believe that with all of our being. We believe that when that's true, that's what carries us, the truth that God is a way maker. May you choose to have that perspective today. today. Father, thank you for the heritage I have because of the sacrifice of your son, Jesus. Please help me to walk in the fullness of life and to trust that you are greater than any hardship I face. Help me to cling to your promises all the days of my life. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about how to love your neighbor. And so we're here in front of my house. I thought it'd be a great start to show you my neighborhood. So here we go. So um, my wife and I have been here with our three kids for 10 years. And um, it's been absolutely amazing. Our neighborhood is just awesome. Uh, we love everyone around us. We have um, the elderly, we have new families, we have those that have been here um, since the beginning of just the development. And uh, it's just awesome uh, to see everyone and how, how well we, we get along. And so in prepping this message, um, I just kind of wanted to make sure, am I actually showing my neighbor's love? And so my personality is one that I want to know. And so what did I do? I actually went to my neighbors and said, hey, how can I show you love? How can I, how can I show you love? And uh, it's pretty amazing the responses that I got. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And, and as a side note, just letting you know, it's not only about the neighbors that you love, it's also about those that get under your skin and we all have them. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. How do you love your neighbor? My wife and I, when we first started dating, um, had an experience that has lasted a long time. 
About two weeks into it, I turned to her and I said these words, Alicia, I love you. It was an incredible moment. The lights were right. The music was playing. And I was waiting for her response, which never came. Instead, she turned to me and said, make sure you don't say that unless you mean it. You can imagine my heart just breaking in that moment, but I later understood what she meant. You see, for me, I love you was a simple four-letter word. I said that so many different times. But to my wife, Alicia, in that moment as we were dating, if I were to say I love her, it meant showing me that I loved her. It meant so much more than just a four-letter word. And today, when we're talking about loving our neighbor, the same concept applies. Some people may say, if you truly love your neighbor, you'll tell them about God's love. Well, I say today, if you truly love your neighbor, you will show them God's love. Now, years later, Alicia and I are now married, and I wanted to make sure that I showed her love. So every time she came in, I'd embrace her. I'd give her a big kiss. Uh, I would uh, buy her gifts. I would do everything I could to try and show her how much I loved her. But after a while, I wasn't quite getting the same reception. I, I wasn't quite feeling like she, she was knowing that I really loved her. Until we were introduced to this book called The Five Love Languages. Now, maybe you've done it, but it has revolutionized our marriage. Because ultimately, yes, Alicia knew that I loved her. And yes, I was showing Alicia love. But it actually wasn't quite the type of love that she received. You see, my wife receives love by words of affirmation. So telling her that she's doing a great job. Telling her that she's awesome, that she's amazing. And by acts of service washing the dishes. Yeah, if I really wanted to show my wife love, those were the things that she was looking for me to do. Well, today, as we dive deep into what it actually means to show our neighbors love, we will find out a number of different things. 1 Corinthians 13 is a passage of scripture that many of you maybe know, maybe even some of you said it at your uh, wedding. Uh, it, Paul, the author, describes love in two parts. The first part, chapter, uh, sorry, verse 1 to verse 3, describes these miraculous things that you can do, but if you don't have love with it, it's actually worth nothing. And then the second half, starting in verse 4, he uses these action words to describe what love is. And listen to how powerful these words are. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. You see, Paul says love is not just a word, but it's actually an action. You have to act out love, and we see all those different areas there. So today, I'll be using the geographic term of neighbor, uh, that we need to love our neighbor. But you replace neighbor with whoever is in your life um, that you need to love. And so uh, a few weeks ago, we uh, Pastor Bill preached a message on um, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. And it was incredible just hearing the idea that loving our neighbor is not an option. We must love our neighbor. And not only those who we love, but actually those who we hate. The importance of loving those people as well. Well, today... We aren't going to talk necessarily on that angle. The angle we're taking is the how-to. How to love your neighbor. It's the practical side. And so back to the dating situation that I told you about before. Love for me came naturally in words, but not in actions. It was pretty difficult for me to show Alicia that I needed to love her. And so I had to work at it. So I feel like it's the same way with our neighbors. So maybe the idea of loving our neighbors doesn't come naturally to you. So what does, that, what does that look like? So when I think about who I love, there's a couple of things that come right to the surface. Those people that I love, number one, I care for. 
I care deeply for those people. If I'm going to love them, then I must care for them. And the second thing is that I value who they are. And so the idea of loving your neighbor goes a little deeper. So the question then becomes, do I value and care for my neighbor? Do I value and care for my neighbor? Which turns into love. So yes, how do I love my neighbor? Today we're going to find out through a number of different ways and especially looking at the life of Jesus. I want to tell you about a, a, my neighbor, one of my first neighbors when Alicia and I bought our first house in Sarnia. We were so happy. We're newlyweds. We bought our first home. It was a great neighborhood. We just loved it. Everything was awesome. And, you know, we, we had that first moment, cup, cup, cups of coffee in our hand, sitting on the porch, and we're just enjoying the birds are chirping. And then all of a sudden, Jim showed up. Jim was our neighbor across the street. Now, Jim uh, didn't have the best life growing up, and he wanted to make sure everybody in our neighborhood knew that he was miserable, that the world was miserable. He would consistently yell and scream at whoever walked by, didn't matter, at his kids, at his wife, at the, uh, the the paper boy, didn't matter. He was yelling at everyone. He wanted to make sure people knew that he was miserable. And so Alicia and I turned to each other and said, man, we, we got to do something about this. God, you better change him. That was our prayer. And almost immediately, we felt this conviction in our heart that said, what if I placed you guys here for Jim so that you can truly show Jim my love? Oh, God, why did you say that? So a couple weeks goes by and I, I, I gained enough strength and I saw Jim out there. He was not having a good day. And I thought, you know what? What better opportunity now or never? So I walked up to him. I said, hey, Jim, how you doing? I just wanted to introduce myself. My name's John Paul. We just bought the house and no response. Just looked at me. And I thought, okay, no problem. Well, have a great day. As I'm walking back, he said, hey, and I thought, okay, this is it. My life is over. I was waving at my wife saying, I love you, babe. That's it. I turned around. And he said, let me know more about who you are. So he just started talking about random things. Didn't last very long, about 30 seconds. And I, I needed to get out of there because I was feeling so nervous. And so I took off and I told Leisha, oh man, I don't know what was going on. A couple weeks later, same thing. Walked up, said hi, more and more discussion, more and more discussion. Well, about a month went by. And I was outside cutting my grass and he called me over and he said, hey, you work with those kids, don't you? And I thought, yeah, I do. He goes, well, my kid needs to be fixed. Fix my kid. And uh, I said, well, I can't really fix him, but I can invite him to some of the programming. And we started driving his kids to our programs that we were having at the church. And needless to say, my relationship with Jim began to grow. And all of a sudden, I valued him. I cared for him. And my love for Jim began to get deeper. And so when I, when I think about that, when I think about Jim, the idea is that how do I love the Jims in my life? Right now, I have great neighbors. One side, I have Miss Priscilla, sweetest lady. She brings me cookies. She brings me cake. It's awesome. The other side, Mr. Mike, even though he's a Habs fan, you know, and very political, but it doesn't matter. He, he, he's so kind and he lends me stuff and he's awesome. It's not difficult to love Priscilla or Mr. Mike. That's easy. But what about Jim? That's where the challenge really becomes. How do I show Jim God's love? And so that's where I, I directly go to the life of Jesus. Because Jesus valued people, and because he valued people, he cared for them. And because he cared for them, he loved them. And if there's anybody in this world that I'm going to look to, I'm going to look to the life of Jesus. And so as we look at his life, there are two things that are so evident about how he showed people love. And the first one is help. Matthew 25, 31 to 46, it's this incredible story that Jesus speaks of. He talks about how one day God will separate us, the sheeps and the goats. Now, it's a metaphor for this idea of sheeps showing those around, showing their neighbor love, and the goats not showing their neighbor's love. And it's, it's amazing because I want you to listen to the words that Jesus uses describing how the sheep or those who showed love to their neighbors, what did they do? Now listen to these words. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger 
and you invited me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Jesus used all these examples that were again action-based. They were helps-based. Ultimately, there were needs and people met those needs. He, He blessed the sheep because they said, hey, you actually blessed, you loved, you showed care, you helped your neighbor out. You helped your neighbor out even though it was difficult, even though it may have been challenging, you helped them out. And that was so impressive when you read that story. And Jesus lived that life. He helped people no matter where he went, whether it was giving sight to the blind or, or feeding people or, or even just simply blessing the children that families would come to him. You see, Jesus was in the ministry of helping people. He looked for the needs and he met those needs. And that is truly powerful. This is the example that Jesus gave to you and I. How if we are to truly show our neighbor love, one of the ways we can do it is by helping them. Now, I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what your neighbors are like. But for me, I know some of the things that we try and do are are very simple. Um, Someone down the road, we know that um, they're elderly and they can't necessarily uh, cut their grass. And so we cut their grass for them. Now, that, that's a very um, cautious thing because some people say, don't touch my grass, so make sure it's okay. Or right now in this season with the leaves falling or meals being prepped or even weeds being pulled out of people's uh, uh, driveway, these are all different things of how we can help simple yet powerful Because in doing those little things, we are showing people love. Now, one of the the most perfect examples of that is my neighbor, six-year-old Ryan. He is incredible. I'm telling you, on a daily basis, he will ask us once, twice, three times, do you need any help? Do you need any help? And all I have to say is, yeah, Ryan, come on over. And he's over with a hammer, with a saw. It doesn't matter what what the need is, but he is there. He's six years old, and he understands his concept. I see him constantly walking across the street, helping the lady across the street, walking across my lawn, helping my neighbor on the one side. No matter what it is, Ryan understands that helping people is a way to show love to others. It's pretty amazing. The other one is a word that, especially in this season, is pretty difficult to understand, and that is hospitality. Hospitality is something that Jesus did all the time. The amount of times you read, Jesus ate with fill in the blank. Jesus ate with so-and-so. Jesus went to this person's house. He practiced hospitality. Now, especially in this season where we are socially distancing and there's this idea of, uh, of staying within your family, I understand it's very difficult. But let me, let me show you the, uh, the heart behind what hospitality really is. Um, Jesus, when he lived his life, look at the list of people that Jesus spent time with over a meal or at their house. The religious leaders who many times Jesus would would argue with or or speak um, uh, directly towards. He ate with them. He was hospitable with them. With families that came to him, he was hospitable with them. With close friends, he was hospitable with them. Now look at the unwanted, those who were shunned by society. He was hospitable with them. The lowly, the sick, the poor, all these people who society looks at a certain way, Jesus practiced hospitality with them. He spent time with them, usually over a meal. And in one of my favorite stories, the story of Zacchaeus found in Luke 19, verses 1 to 10, a powerful story. Here's Zacchaeus, a tax collector who robbed people of more than what he was supposed to. He was hated. He was despised. He was also short. And so to see Jesus, he climbed a tree just so that he could see who this Jesus was. And as Jesus walked by, People despise Zacchaeus. Remember, Jesus pointed to him and said, Zacchaeus, get down. Today I am eating at your house. Today we are going to practice hospitality. And I can just hear the people, the rumors, no, Jesus, do you not know who that is? That's Zacchaeus. We can't stand him. And yet Jesus spent time with him, showed hospitality. And as he was there, we don't know all the details of what was being said, but all I know is that that simple act transformed Zacchaeus' life where he felt conviction to give back the money that he stole and even more. 
And the important part of hospitality isn't even inviting somebody into your home. It's this idea that you and I are not afraid to be seen with people who society push aside. The gyms, our neighbors, the, those who are difficult to love, that we would do this simple act of hospitality, eating a meal together, having a coffee together, going for a walk together, whatever it may be, showing value and care to that person, sitting down, have a listening ear, hearing their story, getting to know them, whatever it is. There's something about practicing this amazing gift of hospitality that is powerful. Now, growing up, this was something we regularly practiced. My parents would actually buy groceries specifically for the random person that might show up to our house. Imagine that. There were cakes and desserts that we were not allowed to touch. That was for the potential guests. And there were two or three days that we, wouldn't, we would purposely not do anything because somebody might invite us over. We had all sorts of people in our home. We went to all sorts of people's houses. You know what it's like now. Six o'clock at night, someone rings the doorbell. It's like Fort Knox. Everyone gets on the floor. Who called? Did you invite somebody? What's going on? How do you? Because we just don't practice hospitality the same way. But it is so, so important to do that. And so to wrap this all up, there's some, a, a few key things that I want you to really understand. To love your neighbor means to care. To care for your neighbor means to value them. And the reason why we value our neighbor even the gems of the world, is because Jesus values them. Jesus looks at them as his children. He looks at them with love and compassion in his heart, and so should you, and so should I. And so maybe you have a gem in your life. Maybe there's neighbors around you, maybe people in your life who you just have a hard time loving. Can I encourage you to ask God to help you in that? Can I encourage you to take a moment and say, God, will you help me to care for them? Will you help me to value them today? Uh, can I encourage you to actually help somebody out in your, in, your, in your world, in your neighborhood? Maybe lend a helping hand, whether it's a meal or cutting someone's grass or raking their leaves, whatever it may be. And the third thing, meet up with somebody. Again, of course, in this season, make sure it's safe um, if you need to go outside and meet for somebody for coffee, maybe you haven't talked to someone in a long time and you just need to take a moment um, to listen to their story. All these things here are practical ways of how we can show someone love today. Remember that story I was telling you about Jim? Well, a couple years later, I visited um, the church that I was attending uh, and, and during that season. And who's there? Jim! Jim was actually in the front row of that church. No idea. He was so happy. His life was transformed. Now, it's probably because of uh, what I did. No, I don't know. I know that God changed his life, and I know that showing our neighbor's love can change people's lives as well. So today, I bless you with the truth that valuing and care, caring for somebody can truly transform someone's life. I bless you today with the idea that honestly being hospitable and being helpful to people in your world can change a life, can truly show your neighbor love. And I bless you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, what a great message from Pastor John Paul today. I hope you were challenged by that. And I know we can all grow in this area of loving our neighbor. And so today I wanna to invite you to take two next steps. And the first one is with God. I wanna encourage you over the next maybe few moments or maybe today or sometime this week, just to set aside some time and to reflect on how can you better love your neighbor. And this is a great challenge for us as a church community. This is so important for us as we spread the amazing love of God to our world, which desperately needs it. Also, I want to encourage you to take the next step with others. Even if you may not need it, somebody else needs you. And we want to encourage you this fall to stay connected to others. Four quick ways that you can do that. The first one is by engaging with our online experience each week in the chat window. We'd love for you to share it. We'd love for you to inter interact with it. The second one is through watch parties, which you can host or join. You can you can also join a group or you can join us on Sundays at 9, 10, 30, and 12. We'd love to be able to help you get connected. And the easiest way to do that is by scanning the QR code on the screen. You can also head over to centralcc.ca slash connect, or you can text the word central to 905-937-5610. 
All that being said, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you have an amazing week. May you go in the truth that when you're connected to God and each other, that is how you experience the full life that you were created for. Hope you have an amazing week. We'll see you back here next week.